Hi, this is Ravi Bista. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to compose introduction of argumentative essay in IELTS. Well, before you actually compose, there are a few things that you have to take into consideration, and I would like to highlight them. Here we go. Okay, um, these are a few things that you have to take into account. So the first thing is, whenever you have a question paper in front of you, you got to underline or mark keywords and use synonyms of these words throughout the essay. However, you have to pay attention that not all keywords or headwords have exact synonyms. Take for example, if you're writing an essay about computer, there's no other substitute word for computer. So you might have to repeat the keyword oftentimes and that's still normal and okay. Just don't use synonyms because you have to do it. That would again degrade your quality of writing. Okay, the second thing is you got to identify the main point of argument. Now this is one of the major things that you have to take into consideration is because you should know what you are for or what you're against, what part of the question you have to debate upon, debate on. So this is the core value of the essay. And the third one is you could do this on your mind. Uh, it's like saying you got to be ready before you actually write down. It says clarify your personal preference either in the introduction or conclusion. I would say both better. You could clarify your personal preference in the introduction as well as conclusion and that would be a good flow. Okay, now let's take this question into account first. The question says, spoken communication is always more powerful than the written communication. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So it says, to what extent? You could say, I 100% agree with the statement. So you can go with the agreement. Or if you want to disagree 100% against the topic, you could do that. Or you could say, 70 30 so maybe you might want to write this 70 percent of this task and 30 percent of another task however make sure that your preference is clear either in the introduction or your conclusion now as i said you got to underline the keywords and headwords because you're going to use synonyms now let's see communication it says here now these are certain synonyms now at times you may not be able to exactly replace the word communication with interaction so as you write you have to understand the flow now you could use these words in the following body paragraphs instead of communication you could say interaction people interact with each other converse communicate convenience now synonym does not mean another word it also could be parts of speech like communication could be communicate it could be communicating and several other ways okay now this was about underlying the keywords and headword and yes for spoken you could say verbal you could say oral all right so now we'll move on to the second key feature now you have to really really understand something here as i said main argument so what are you going to argue on that's the main point okay which mode of communication is more powerful is it the oral or written one now if you know the tussle i think it's easier for you to write further so your the whole essay could be about why oral is powerful than written or the vice all right, after knowing this, now you should understand certain parameters of composing introduction. Here we go. Okay, you could follow any one of the two ways here. You could either start with a general background and then include restatement of question statement and thesis statement. Mind you, this two parameters are compulsory. Whether you want to give a general background or not is not mandatory. It's not compulsory. So you could just start with restating the question statement 
and thesis statement. So how do we do that? I'm going to help you break down this into simpler form. Here we go. Okay, now, restating, paraphrasing, question statement. Before doing that, let us understand this theory of x and y. What do I mean by x and y? Let's say x is some and y is others. Mind you, when you say some, you got to write others to maintain parallelism. Okay, what does this mean? x or some is one school of thought and y and other is another school of thought. Let's understand this question here. Spoken communication is always more powerful. Okay, let's take this as x. This is what x says. This is what some people say. And now let us see what y says. Written communication. Let's take this as y or let's take this as others. Now this is actually a prompt. Now let's dissect this prompt into what some say and what others say. So check this out. Some argue that. Now when it says some argue that, what do they argue? What is it about? It's about spoken communication is more powerful. So say this, some argue that oral communication is much efficient than written one, while others reject this school of thought. When he says this school of thought means someone, some who say that oral communication is efficient. So this is one way of restating, a simpler version in fact. Another way you could do the same thing is, some claim that verbal means of communication such as face-to-face -face interaction and telephone conversation is better. So this is again X thought, while others support written form. So when you say while others support written form, you're going to avoid use of communication repeatedly. And this we call it as referencing. When you reference, you avoid repetition. Now let's compile this and see. Now before that, let's see thesis statement. Okay, what is thesis statement? Thesis statement in simple word is your view towards the question or how you would like to present in your overall essay. It gives the checker a glimpse of what you're going to present, which is a fantastic way of portraying your view. Here we go. So type one. Now there are many ways of composing this statement, but I've come up with only type two. And if you ask me, I would say type one is much better than type two. So what is type one? Although written communication such as email and letters has its own merit. Now from this word, I've used the term although, you should understand this is actually use of complex structure. So it gives you an idea about what I'm going to support. So if you go through this, you'd get a rough idea, the reader would get a rough idea about the writer not supporting written communication. So it says, although written communication such as email and letters has its own merit, the supremacy of verbal communication cannot be smitten. Now, if you see this, it gives my standpoint of view. It gives my preference. So this is what you have to do when you write an introduction. Especially, this statement clarifies my intention of what I'm going to write throughout the body paragraph. In type two, it's a very simple version. Now, if you find difficult in composing this statement, I would say first try with type two. Once you get the flow, always go with type one, I would say. Now, see this. This essay shall discuss why oral communication is dominant over written one. Now, if you go with the rules of writing, usually what they say is, this is declaration. 
and it's always good to avoid declaration in your thesis statement. However, it's just an argumented basis, so that's fine. Your score is not going to low, or you're not going to get a low score simply because you've written this. This is fine for IELTS AC. Now, in one word, if you see those, I've compiled this. So this is combination of, I've omitted background, remember that. This is statement, so this is restate the topic, and this is this is statement. Now, it should not be separate, because it's, it's just two sentences as a whole actually. So you just have to start from here. Now see, some argue that oral communication is much efficient than written one, while others reject the school of thought. Although written communication such as email and letters has its own merit, the supremacy of verbal communication cannot be smitten. So this is a simple way of composing your introduction, especially in argumentative essay. Now, example type two, it says, some claim that verbal means of communication such as face-to-face -face interaction and telephone conversation is better, while others support written form. This essay shall discuss why oral communication is dominant over the written one. Now, even this thesis statement, this thesis statement is one-sided. It tells the checker that I'm going to support oral communication. But here, the check, checker gets a flow of, okay, the writer is going to write a little bit about the written form and is going to support more to the verbal communication. So this is a simple way to introduce your argumentative essay. I hope this video was useful to you all. Until we meet in the next video, I would like to sign off. Bye-bye.